Phoenix, Arizona was three hours behind the East Coast, so we'd only lost a few hours of daylight from our flight and the transfer time in Atlanta. Both Bruce and I were edgy about wandering around in places we weren't familiar with after the sun had set. We weren't afraid of being mugged or robbed, but had a real concern about running into a creature of the night, something we wouldn't have dreamed of worrying about a few months ago. We were well equipped and prepared to handle vampires, but now we had to face werewolves. We didn't have enough knowledge to deal with them. There were questions that needed to be answered and answered quickly. Bruce's arm was looking angry near the werewolf gash he'd received. Was it a typical wound infection, or was it something that would lead to a far greater problem? We just didn't know. These were the answers we needed, and needed now. The sizable tip that I promised the cab driver spurred him into action. Since he knew the streets well, he was able to get us to our hotel in record time. Bruce was feeling a little woozy by the time we reached the hotel room. He flopped gratefully onto his bed. He was doing his best to hide his concern from me. He was feeling odd. It wasn't something he could put his finger on, but he knew it was more than a simple infection from the gash on his arm. He feared the worst. Could he be turning into one of those creatures? I could see that Bruce was struggling against something. Although my cousin had said nothing, it was obvious he was worried. There was no time to waste. I needed to find this paranormal group and get the answers we needed before it was too late. I'm going to scoot down to the computer area and look up the paranormal group's contact information, I said as I pulled the draperies against the brilliant Arizona sun. Why don't you take a short nap while I'm gone? I'll wake you when it's time to go. Good idea, he said. The words were barely past Bruce's lips before he was snoring peacefully. I scowled as I watched his chest heave up and down in deep slumber. Was he in such a deep sleep from exhaustion or was it from something else? Overwhelmed with a sense of urgency that I hadn't experienced before on this issue, I hurried out of the room to find a computer. Connecting with the leader of the paranormal group was easier than either Bruce or I had originally thought it would be. Fortunately for his daytime job, he was a car salesman at a local Mazda dealership. He told me during our telephone conversation that Bruce and I should pretend to be looking for a car and ask for him specifically. This gave us the freedom of conversation while we walked around from vehicle to vehicle. We sat in a few so we could start them up to reap the benefits of the cool air conditioning. Ken was in charge for the last decade of the Paranormal and Underworld Research Society, better known as PERS. He'd seen quite a bit during that time frame, but he'd never seen a human who'd survived a werewolf attack. He marveled that he lived to tell about it, but wondered if Bruce hadn't turned because he received a scratch instead of a bite, or if his turning was simply delayed as a result of it being a scratch and not a bite. Coincidentally, Bruce and I were wondering the same thing. After only a few minutes of this man's company, I assessed that it was safe to fill him in on our entire story. I decided that the more he knew, the better he could help. It was the right decision. Within seconds of completing the story, Ken was on his cell phone making calls to members of the society who he felt would be of help. A meeting was organized for 7 o'clock. We were given the address and very complete directions. Now all we could do was go back to our hotel room, rest, and wait for the meeting time. We did so gratefully.